All right, folks, so now we're going to talk about these things called force diagrams. Um, force diagrams are basically vector drawings that are going to help us to explain uh, motion and forces. All right, so here's some steps for drawing force diagrams if you're a steps kind of person. Um, we draw these guys with arrows. Sometimes the arrows touch the object, like, for example, um, Awful color. There we go. All right, so say I have um, a box, and uh, we know that force of gravity pulls down on it, right? So I am showing my arrow touching the box here. Okay, other times people do it like this. Instead of saying the box, they'll just draw like a little circle, and then they'll draw the force diagram off the circle or the dot, whichever is fine. A uh, length of the arrow is proportional to the size. So essentially, um, say you have a, a book sitting on a table, force of gravity should be, the vector for that should be the same length, so same magnitude, um, that's not gravity, normal. Uh, so it should be the same length, but opposite direction okay so basically these uh, the sizes of your arrows tell you what's going on tail of the arrow is always on the object basically that means that your arrows are always going away from the object and make sure you always label whatever force you're talking about okay so here we go so we got a ball hanging on a rope okay so everybody has gravity that's the super easy one to do Okay, uh, and this one also has the rope attached, so it has the tensional force. So here's one way to do it, and then, of course, this way right here is just what I wrote over there. Okay, so you can either do the dot, have it like that, or you can draw it directly off the object. You can abbreviate these as long as we can see what you're saying. Okay, so let's just do a few practice here. Okay, so here we have... Um, some sort of ball or some sort of object of some sort and um, it's got two tensional ropes so first thing you always draw is gravity okay so there's your force of gravity all right and then you notice that it's got these uh, these ropes on it so the ropes are gonna provide the tensional forces all right now this is an interesting question it says or not question but thought it says it's static, which means uh, either it's no acceleration, right? So we can probably safety, safely assume this thing's not moving. So for it not to be moving, that means that the force of gravity has to be equivalent to the force of these tensional ropes, both one and two, um, in the y direction. Okay, we'll get to all that a little later, but just thought I'd point that out. Okay, so here's another one. So free body diagram. We've got ball going down. And then we got the force of tension going up. Again, static. So that means force of gravity here is equal to the force of tension. That's why it's not moving. Okay, this one, we got an air, I mean air, of rock falling through the air. So we got force of gravity automatically. Um, it says no air friction. So we're ignoring any like drag from the air that would happen. So all we have is force of gravity. So this is definitely uh, dynamic or um, what uh, we would refer to as having um, unbalanced forces. Unbalanced just means they're not canceling each other out, right? There is acceleration occurring. Here, acceleration due to gravity. All right, here we have another um, little ball hanging from a rope. So we got force due to gravity, and then we got these tensional forces again. Ah, F sub T, there we go. All right, oops. All right, so here we have um, just a ball sitting on a surface. So of course we still have F sub G. Now sitting on the surface, this is where normal force comes in. So normal is what the surface exerts back on the object. So in this case, uh, we have the table exerting 
a normal force back on the object. The normal force is always perpendicular to the surface. So here's our surface, there's perpendicular, okay? Since this guy's static or not accelerating, that means these two values are equal and opposite. All right, here, this gets a little trickier, okay, when we start throwing in some uh, two-dimensional stuff. All right, gravity is still straight down. Now, you have a rope here, so that means you also have a tensional force. Now, it's still sitting on a surface, so you have a normal force. But now, your surface is over here, so to be perpendicular, it would have to go this way. So, your normal force is that way this time. All right, another one with um, a little odd surface going on here. Okay, so first off, force due to gravity. All right, and this one appears to be resting on two surfaces. So perpendicular to this surface would be that way. And then perpendicular to that surface would be this way. So basically, it's like having two normal forces there.